So let's continue our Physics 30 prep fast track lessons. Uh, uh, lesson number seven is uh, kinematic formula C. We're just going to give you the third installment here. And so uh, what we have here is uh, uh, an algebraic little uh, exercise here. I won't spend too much time going over this with you, but uh, just so you can watch. Uh, here are the five variables, as you will have noticed from previous lessons. The five variables that we deal with in kinematics, which is the study of motion, are initial velocity, final velocity, displacement, acceleration, and time. And so all of the equations that we're dealing with at, up, up to this point have one or two or three of those variables in them. And sometimes uh, we could have even up to four variables, of course, and uh, there might even be one that has five, but we don't deal with that one. But using the first two formulas that we've developed, that is uh, d is equal to vf plus vi over 2 times t, and of course the other one, vf is equal to vi plus at, which is just a, uh, a changed version of our a is equal to vf minus vi over t. It's just manipulated, so it's just still the same equation. When you do a substitution, now when I say substitution, what we'll do with that substitution is we're going to take VF and substitute it right there. All right, so instead of writing VF now here, what we're going to write is what VF is equal to. And when you do that substitution, and uh, basically what we're going to put in here is d is equal to vi plus at plus vi. That gives us 2vi. And when we simplify that, we still have d on the left, all right? What we'll end up with is vit plus 1 half at squared. And so it's just another way of, of, of deriving a new equation. So now we have three equations. Uh, we've got a is equal to vf minus vi over t, d is equal to vf plus vi over 2 times t. And now we have a third equation. And uh, you'll notice that this one doesn't have vf. What doesn't this one have? d is equal to vf plus vi over 2 times t doesn't have a. And this guy, all right, in this version, it doesn't have distance, does it? It doesn't have displacement. So every equation is is missing a different variable. There are five total. Each equation that we're developing seems to have four with one missing. And that uh, be becomes useful because it helps you to figure out which equation you should use in a problem. So here's your third equation for accelerated motion. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, practice here. OK, so um, the following are practice questions with the third of four expressions or formulas you use. It is critical, and I'm just, uh, you know, I do stress this, that uh, you can't learn this from watching these tapes. You have to go and do these on, uh, uh, you know, pen and paper and uh, with your calculator and work on these problems a lot that you're given. All right? These are just examples to watch, but you need to practice a lot on your own time. All right, so uh, a cyclist initially at rest accelerated uniformly at 2.5 uh, west, 2.5 meters per second squared for six seconds. All right, so here's the initial velocity, zero. Now, this is an interesting part right here. Anytime the initial velocity is zero, this equation actually just becomes d is equal to 1 half at squared because the whatever a t is, if you multiply t by zero, you still get zero. So in this case, since vi is uh, at rest, and that means that uh, the initial velocity is 0, a is 2.5. Don't forget with this, it's not t, but it's t squared. And so you multiply 1 half times a times 6 squared, which is 36. So you'd get actually 1 and a quarter times 36. Um, that sounds like a, uh, about 45. And so notice your answer. 45 meters, and because I asked for the displacement, I should give my answer as a vector. All right, so 45 meters, which way? Well, you go back to the question, and uh, 
here it says he was going accelerating west, so he must have had a displacement that was west. All right, that's a typical example. Now, notice no manipulation on this one. The next one will. So continuing along, uh, same equation, example number two. A car was accelerated uniformly from 10 meters per second, initial velocity, at a rate of 9.5 meters per second squared, acceleration, for five seconds. And um, how far? What was the distance? And of course we're looking for D. Again, oh, I gave you a nice easy one here. Um, because I gave you the initial velocity, I gave you the time, and I gave you the acceleration. And of course the time is also here. And so that's another substitution. In this case, um, there is an initial velocity, so this term must also be included. But uh, uh, 10 times 5 is 50. And then 1 half times 9.5 times 5 squared, whatever that works out to be. It should work out to be about, uh, it's probably about 170, all right, meters. So if your answer works out to be 170 meters or so, it might be 169 point something. Uh, notice I give you an answer in kilometers, all right? So don't worry about that. Don't think that you're out by 1,000 if your answer is 169 or 171 or whatever it works out to be, that's close to 0 0.17. And another example, uh, you'll have to solve for A, all right? So this time you do have to manipulate, and here's the problem. A train was accelerated uniformly from 10 meters per second, so that's the initial velocity over a distance of 500 meters for a period of 20 seconds. What was the acceleration of the train? And this one is a little bit of a challenge to uh, manipulate. Step number one, though, is you need to isolate the term that contains the unknown. And that term is A. All right, or that unknown is A, so the term is uh, circled here. Now, to do that, we just divide, or, or sorry, subtract VIT from both sides, and that's what we end up with right here d minus vit. Now we've got rid of the d minus or the vit. Now we have to get rid of the 2 or the half multiplied by 2. So you get rid of a half on one side by multiplying by 2 both sides. So you get 2 times d minus v over t or v minus, uh, sorry, 2 times d minus vit. And then of course to get rid of the t squared you divide by t squared and you divide both sides by t squared. And so that's the manipulation. And once you have that, then what? Then it's a matter of substitution. 500 meters is d, so that would go 500, minus uh, vi, which is 10, times t, which is 20. So of course, uh, 20 times 10 is 200. 500 minus 200 is, is um, 300 times 2 you get 600 on the top, and then you divide by t squared, which is uh, uh, 20 squared is 400, 600 divided by 400 is 1.5. And so you get 1.5, and of course the units will be meters per second squared. All right, so that's a, that's a, you know, almost as tough as it gets. If you can sort of take a look at that and say, all right, I can make the sense of it, I can follow, or I can figure out what to do, then uh, you're in good good shape, and we'll uh, you, we'll continue to show you examples. But here's the initial that you want to start with. You should be able to manipulate the formula and get this. Once you have that, then it's a matter of substitution, making sure you're comfortable with your calculator. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. Sometimes people just don't get the right answer because they're using uh, the wrong calculator or they're not quite sure how to use the one they have. Okay, um, not to um, not to say anything bad about graphing calculators, but they're more calculator than you need for this course. So unless you're really comfortable with how your graphing calculator works, uh, a simple uh, scientific calculator does the job in this course. All right, There's nothing that will uh, create much of an advantage using the graphing calculator. All right, And we have one more example. 
using this formula. In this problem, you will need to solve or manipulate the formula for the unknown, in this case, VI. So a skier was accelerated uniformly at 1.2 meters per second squared. Of course, this is your acceleration. All right. Uh, over a distance of 500 meters, so here's your distance, D, for a period of 20 seconds. So we know the time, let's see this and this. So of course we want to know what was the initial speed of the skier. And this manipulation is very difficult. All right, This is a tough one. This is not going to be uh, your standard question, it's going to be a higher level type of question. All right, but. Um, we want to show you the tough ones too, and uh, if you can do this one and you find it not too bad, then you're in very good shape. If you're struggling with this one, it's not um, the end of the world. It just means that you're not up to the to the highest level you could be. But you're uh, if you can do all the other ones, you're going to be in good shape. But this is a bit of a challenge. So a skier was accelerated uniformly at 1.2. All right, to solve for the initial speed. What you would do is, of course, isolate this term. How do you isolate that term? Well, you move the other term to the other side. And so you end up with d minus 1 half at squared on the left or on the top here. The only thing you're left with now is vit. Well, to solve for that, you just divide by t. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, and there is your solution. So not too bad, really. But it's difficult for people to see uh, that first time through. All right, so uh, keep practicing those ones. When you do your substitution, all right, 500 minus uh, one half times uh, a times t squared over t, you, um, uh, you should get about 13 meters per second. So the initial speed was was uh, was one point or 13 meters per second. Now, one thing they could ask. Also, with this question, they could have an A part and a B part. They might ask, uh, what was the final velocity of the skier? And so you could use a number of different ways to solve that. So they sometimes make these questions two-part.